Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. Now, uh, here's something else. Um, I discovered that these little read relays will actually function as a read switch, too. So I've got this one mounted just uh, sticking up here. I've got the uh, negative power going to the uh, to the switch contact, the normally closed contact going to the coil, and then back to the coils to the positive power. And then the standard super fast diode and capacitor um, from the bottom of the coil to the negative with a, um, a neon across there. Okay, so now um, I'm giving, got the power supply set to 2.8 volts there, 2.8 volts. And uh, since the reed switch actuates um, without regard to polarity, every polarity of the magnet actuates the reed switch. So I get a kind of a rocking back and forth motion on the magnet rather than, or on the rotor rather than a uh, <laughs> rather than a rotation. But uh, I think you can see that the neon does fire. Okay, and if I do get the um, if I do get the reed switch in just the right spot and the contacts don't weld shut, I can sometimes get it going by a bias magnet here, so that it'll only switch on one polarity. This is very very tricky to do though. I haven't quite got the hang of it yet, but. If I can get it going, you'll see what I mean. Almost. The trick is to get the reed switch just switching on one of the magnet polarities. Be patient. I've already welded the contacts of the reed switch together once by doing this. I guess you can see the bright purple flashes in the neon. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's the reed switch is frozen now. Sometimes I can get it back by beating on it. Yeah, there we go. baby. It's really exciting when it starts spinning. Oh, now we'll weld it again. Almost. Those high voltage pulses weld the contacts of the reed switch together. Baby. Uh, once I figured out how to uh, uh, precisely position the uh, reed switch with respect to the armature and put a little bias magnet in there at just the right spot, now it's working great with the, uh, with the reed switch. Notice the neon. Oh, I forgot to mention I put a 33 picofarad 500 volt ceramic capacitor across the reed contact, and that prevents the contacts from welding themselves together. And as you can see, we still have plenty of uh, plenty of uh, radiance, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. We're getting a lot of uh, voltage there. And this is happening at 2.7 volts input, 350, 360 milliamps input, and I have the Silvatac going, and uh, let's see if I can freeze that motion there, that's 11,000, 
500 RPM. There. And uh, that's, that's on the lead switch and bias magnet. That sucker is really cooking. Look at that neon. I'm amazed because the uh, air cores uh, of those coils, there's not really very much inductance there, but clearly there's enough to generate a pretty good spike. And so what's going on here? Are we accelerating? Yeah, we actually sped up just a little bit. Almost uh, 11,600 RPM now. And uh, that capacitor cured my uh, contact welding problem, I guess, because as you can see, that sucker is moving. And it's still accelerating too. Anytime it looks like it's going uh, counterclockwise, that means that it's accelerating from whatever the position I have the strobe attack set. RPM. Uh, 11,600 RPM. That sucker is cooking. All right, thanks for watching.